court would agree to hear my case and find me innocent of crime. Holding public rallies to incite sympathy, creative actuality. If I were a killer, I'd smile just like the boy next door. If I were a killer, I say I'd do it for the poor. If I were a killer, you'd bring me victims more and more. If I were a killer. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Post-election, coming at you. Everything's complete bedlam, and we're, we're here to sort it all out. Andrew Richter's here with me, Jason Bradley, as normal. Hey. You, you know, I've never been happier for Election Day to be over. I, I, anytime Election Day comes, I have nothing left. Yeah? I have nothing left. Well... I recharged my batteries, and, and you did it for for a day, and you're raring to go now. <laughs> I guess so. I finally yeah. got a half decent night's sleep. So well, that 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 does something. Doesn't, doesn't happen much for me. Yeah, well, that tune. I know you didn't know it. Galactic Cowboys. If I were a killer, a uh, band out of Houston that I, I, I love. The no, song's I had actually, dinner with them yesterday. It, <laughs> the song is actually about abortion. Uh, hmm. Yeah. But so why did I use that? We're not talking about abortion today. This is, I guess, my my congratulations speech to Tina Smith. Huh. <laughs> well, I, I, but I mean, this look at it, some of these lyrics. It's like Supreme Court would agree. Blah, blah blah blah. Holding public rallies to incite sympathy and creative actuality. That's what we've got going on all over the landscape this election season, where people just seem out of their minds, and and I can't seem to figure out for the life of me. You know, the things that we would have considered like absolute nutsville four years ago are, are gaining momentum in our society. And, well, and it's, it's, it's crazy, Andrew. Well, well I think, um, you know, technology and the Internet has been a wonderful thing for the most part. It's been a huge net positive, in my opinion, yeah. um, especially considering doing what you and I do, which 20 years ago we couldn't have done. Right. <clears throat> but I think it's also given a plat. Now, look, I believe in freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to silence people. I think that's one of the differences between, I don't want to say people on the left and on the right, because that's overgeneralizing. Right. One of the differences is there's a, some people who want to shut down their opposition, mm -hmm. and there are some people who want to defeat their opposition at the ballot box. And I think that there's, I think the side that wants to shut people down is growing. Yeah. Um, one of the things that concerns me, um, just generally speaking, is what's happening on college campuses. I right. mean, college campuses are maybe the most intolerant places in this country. I mean, first of all, it's bad enough that you spend a hundred grand, get a degree in African American studies, and then go work as a waiter. Okay, that's bad enough. Okay, I mean, right. <laughs> you, you can't get much worse than that. But the way um, opposition to the majority on college campuses and treated, everybody should be embarrassed about it. You know, just imagine, Jay, think of it like this. I would never speak at a college campus. I would never do it. Yeah, I'd get shouted down. I'd get things thrown at me. And nobody would do a damn thing about it. Nobody would prosecute anybody. Um, you know, and that's not freedom of speech, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, holding a protest is freedom of speech. Debating somebody is freedom of speech. Gathering is freedom of assembly. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a misunderstanding about what freedom of speech is. Now, when a, when, when, a, when a conservative goes and speaks at a college campus, all those things happen. Imagine, Jay, yes. if that stuff happened to a gay person or a black person or a Muslim person. We'd all be in touchy-feely class talking about diversity and tolerance and how you have to accept everybody. But if you hold a certain point of view that disagrees with the majority, mm -hmm. you are shouted out. And I think that's so worrisome to me, especially on college campus. They're tax-funded. For the most part, yeah, and they the, those freedom of speech protections ought to be there. Well, and this isn't anything new, but it's so much worse than it used to be. Uh, when I went to college, but uh, I was at the College of Saint Scholastica up in Duluth. Uh, we're talking mid '90s here, so it, it was a while back. And, and that's I, '1990s for you people. That, that, that's true. <laughs> not the 1890s. Not that old. <laughs> Uh, 2090s haven't happened yet, so. <laughs> uh, 
I was head of an organization there, and we were putting on a um, – we were having someone from a local radio station come and speak. Mm -hmm. And she was going to talk about gender roles, you know, just uh, to, to have a discussion and, and stuff like that. But it was, it was not – your liberal point of view. It was somebody that, you know, uh, worked at the local Christian radio station. I'll just uh, come on and say it. Uh, so we had, so maybe and, a, and it, it was a female on okay. top of it. So maybe a more modern, traditional type Yeah, theme. you know, it wasn't going to be misogynistic. I mean, we're having a woman do it, you right. know. Uh, but it, it was crazy because we had our, our posters were being torn down uh, and we're pretty sure it was a concerted effort because not only were all of our posters being torn down, the college itself decided to create an event on the same topic on the same day and gave credit for the, for their like freshman orientation class that they had. I forget what they call it, but all the freshmen had to take it. It was basically indoctrination class. Gave credit for that class if they went to their event rather than our event because they were at the same time on the same day. Yeah. Uh, I remember also sitting at a round table with people from uh, from the college, and you know, this is. I'm not Catholic. I've never been Catholic, but it was a Catholic college. Still is, I, I guess, even mm -hmm. though they don't act like it. Um, <laughs> I remember being at this round table, and, and there was a lesbian woman that said, I think that all straight people need to be slapped in the face. And that was okay. That was okay for her to say that. But if I had said that, that yeah, I think so-and-so need to slap in the face, need a wake-up call, whatever, I would have been the bad guy. CNN, Don Lemon, Vance Jones. Yeah. I mean, do I need to go on? I mean, uh, you know, it's it's become it's become where some people have a license to say whatever they want, and some people are castrated the second they have an opinion. What happened to Tucker Carlson, where uh, Antifa just vandalized his home? Yeah, and um, um, were chant. He wasn't home. His family was home. Yeah, though. and I mean that's. Not. That's an act of – if the Ku Klux Klan did that, it would be an act of terrorism. It'd yeah, be a it hate would be crime, a crime. You know, which hate – all crimes to a certain extent are, are hate. hate. Yes. It's just silly. It's just extra protection for certain groups, which, again, is unequal treatment under the law. So, I mean, there's the, – the free discourse of ideas mm -hmm. is something. But I'll tell you what. I think the big problem is that people don't get prosecuted for this stuff. I mean, there's no um, – and, and the other problem is it's a concerted effort. Do you think thousands of people just end up doing something just because they have nothing? But, you know, I mean, uh, uh. Republicans lost a lot of elections in Minnesota and nationwide. Right. They won some, yeah. you know, and midterms often go against the party in charge. Not always, right. but usually. Um, um and it means nothing for the year 2020. If you don't believe that, see 2012 and 1996, and then see the midterms before that. And tell me this means anything for 2020. It means nothing. Right. But um, where I was going with this is that, <clears throat> you know, when, when President Trump won, the reaction from the people who didn't vote for him yeah. was disgusting. The looting, the um, – I, I don't mean the peaceful protests. That's different. Mm -hmm. The hate-filled, uh, you know, uh, rhetoric, the unwillingness to accept, the threats to, you know, change how we vote and blah, blah, blah. I mean, the reaction from the left was sick. Yes. Conservatives got up the morning after the election went back to work. There were no – there were no rocks thrown through windows. No. There was nothing Nobody like... Nobody shutting down freeways, yeah. marching, and yeah, <laughs> yeah it's right. an happen. So, I mean, there's... You can see, you know, who's the adult in the room and who isn't, and who, if they don't get their way, and you know, how they act. And so... But it does concern... What concerns me, though, is that they're, they're being cheered on. They're being funded. Nobody seems interested in that story. Mm -hmm. Um you have ignorant people there who are just there to boost numbers. They don't know why they're marching. Talk to somebody who was in these women's marches and 
none of them can explain why they showed up. Mm-hmm. They're just there. Ah, we're just marching, you know. Yeah. They're all beat sitting in the unemployment line, I guess. And, you know, um, I always say that you have to turn things into action. And, and by action, I mean exchange of ideas. I mean meetings. I mean door knocking. I mean mm-hmm. running for office and so on and so forth. But the civil discourse, uh, and I, maybe it's time for everybody to take, retake Civics 101. I, I've never heard more um, um, from The View, the one with the red hair, I never can remember her name. Joy Behar, right. that one. Yeah. Um, claimed okay. that uh, the next day that the reason the Republicans won the United States Senate was because of gerrymandering. Oh. Now, you think she passed civics class? Probably not. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean... <laughs> How can you gerrymander two votes a state? Oh, yeah. it is, it's an at-large election for, <laughs> per state. You know, uh, I think we're going to move our border yeah. over with North Dakota. About just think, she gets feet. paid hundreds of yeah. thousands of dollars yeah. to have a show and make comments, and claimed it was gerrymandering. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I uh, I don't know. I think that uh, it's it's, but yeah, the the. Um, Inability to have the intolerance of of some folks, mostly on the left, not all, <clears throat> uh, but mostly, and just you know the example of a college campus, which is maybe the most intolerant place on earth, yeah. and it isn't fair because taxpayers fund most of it, and it should represent the people, um, not just one uh, intolerant point of view. So, yeah, I mean it's pretty brutal. I think you know anybody has got a, a a vehicle to say whatever they want to. And that's good, generally speaking. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and again, I don't want to shut anybody up, and I don't think social media should be doing that. It's not up to Facebook or, or Twitter to define people they don't like as hate groups. I mean, that's, where do, you, where do you draw the line there? Right. I mean, everybody from the Black Panthers to the Ku Klux Klan has got a right of freedom of speech. They've got a right to freedom of ideas. We can hate them. We can disagree with them. We can debate them. We can yell at them. Yeah. We can't shut them up. If we don't defend points of view that we disagree with, when our point is the one that's unpopular, who's going to stand up for us? Uh, it can get outlawed. If we want to outlaw somebody's point of view, yeah. what – how are we any better than they are? And I'll tell you, I don't agree with any of those groups. I think neither do I. I think that what they stand for is atrocious. But at the same time, do they have a right to say it? So long as they're not making a personal threat against anybody, so long as they're not taking action that is threatening or or inciting causing, it. Ins- yeah, because that's that, yeah, exactly. inciting it is is technically you know, that's not freedom of speech. No, no, no. So you know, no, but to say I don't like. X, Y, Z. Yes. I have at it all day, even if I don't agree with you, which in those cases I most certainly do not. Yeah. No. I mean, you're right. And I think that, uh, I don't know, I fear where it's heading because I only think it's going to get worse. I, I really don't know what's going to make things better. Right. I, um, I, I just. Because this is the other thing. I mean, if we're not allowed to say what's really on our mind, if we did not, if we don't have freedom of speech to say Certain things we don't really know who people are either, which is another problem. Well, and but, we know who members of the Ku Klux Klan are because they they are free to say it, and we know to disassociate ourselves with those people because that's the other part of the First Amendment, or one of the other parts is freedom of association. Mm-hmm. Well, we it we need to know who we're associating with, you know, or the freedom of disassociation is also, I would say. You know, in parallel to that, we have to be able to to know who people are so that we're free to not associate with them uh, based on what they believe or, or, or don't believe. And if they're forced to put that under a mask, then where does that leave us? Well, I'll tell you what, the biggest threat, I, I think one of the biggest threats we have in this country is political correctness. Oh, yes. I mean, um, if you can't have an honest conversation about, um, uh, you know... What's wrong with uh, – yeah, I'll just come out and say it. I mean, what the hell? Um, there's problems in every community of color, white included. Mm-hmm. And if you can't freely discuss that, then where are we in, in terms of problem solving? I mean, I'll just give you an example. 
and I know we're meandering here, but this is kind of a meandering show. Well, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to get to. I mean, we're gonna, this we're is we're little, setting the stage for the election, election, and we're going to talk about the election stuff. But you know, I I saw a forum, and I'm trying to think of when this was. This maybe a year ago, about um, what to do about with with young black folks in Minneapolis. Hmm. They focused on black in particular, and you could. I, 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 and there's differences in each kind of. Unfortunately, the way things have evolved, both by choice and organically, you end up with little neighborhoods of little Somalia and little blah blah blah. Yeah. Of course, this goes all the way back to New York, 150 years ago, where you had little Italy and blah blah blah. Uh, and I think that's unfortunate. I don't like that. Uh, you know, I, assimilation is something that. One of the problems we have with immigration is we don't assimilate. We keep bringing people in, but there's no, <laughs> you yeah. know, assimilation into society. They don't become Americans. Um, and, but the whole conversation, and this was with, I should say, with black panelists, which is interesting because no point of view from any other race was welcome or there or featured or anything. It was all blacks talking about blacks, which... You know, you might think is informative, but when I listened to it, I thought to myself, this is exactly why we're where we're at in inner cities. And you can pick a different inner city. You don't have to pick North Minneapolis. Right. You could pick Chicago. You could pick Detroit. You could pick – I don't have to name them off. You know, where, you know the inner cities, okay, L.A., whatever. The big complaints – I have a model of success, Jay, and I think yes. this – I think this – everybody defines success differently. I still think we think it's all about money. I don't necessarily agree with that. No. But, but success – here's the three keys as a young person. Number one, your high school diploma is a must, an absolute must. Mm -hmm. You can get it for free. There's no excuse not to get it. Yeah. You need to stay away from unplanned pregnancies. Uh, if you are a teenage parent, you are <clears> – <throat> You got a foot on your throat when you start, and not, not, not that kids aren't great or blessings; they are. But you have kids when you're ready, mm -hmm. when you have a house and you have a spouse oh. as well, hopefully, or whatever. Yeah. Two good parents can make things work. I know in today's society, marriage doesn't seem to mean anything very much, but when it comes to having a family, there's so many broken families. It happens. I agree. It happens. Yeah. It's I don't hate. Look. I don't, I don't have bad things to say about them. I'm just saying, if you're 17 and you're pregnant, you are you're starting limited at, to yeah. what you can do. You probably be spend the next 10 years waiting tables. Okay, just a fact. It's just going to take you twice as much work to get where you want to be. Yes, I mean th th that's what you're trying to say. No doubt about it. Yeah. And the third thing is you have to stay away from gangs. You have to stay away from drugs. Yeah. <laughs> Especially young people where their brains are developing. And, you know, that stuff can turn into a lifelong addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody who's 68 years old decides to snort crack for the first time. When do you do it? Okay, you do it when you're young. Yeah. So the point I'm getting at is that that goes through all races, all, gen all genders, both genders or any other gender you can think of, <laughs> other um, there are only two. That's a medical fact. That's what I think, too. Don't but, care what people have yeah, to say about that. True. Um, so I think that's universal. Yeah. Uh, some people start out a little ahead than others. You're never going to erase that. There's no such thing as an equal outcome. But if you look at what is plaguing mm -hmm. minorities, particularly blacks in the inner city, it's one of those three things. Yeah. But I tell you this, I mean, you talk about equal outcomes. I can show you a bunch of people that started with nothing and became something. Right. I can show you a ton of people that started with everything and became nothing. Yeah. You know? But, I, but here's my point. Yeah. But watching this forum, none of these so-called leaders, and I use that term uh, loosely, I guess, yeah. would admit – that those things were really problems. Like one of the things they kept saying is, well, we need more black police officers. I don't know why. I don't know why it matters what 
color an officer is. If they're doing their job, then it shouldn't matter. But here's my question. If blacks aren't graduating high school, mm-hmm. okay, and they're not they're having a kid at 17, and they're doing drugs and drinking at 16, how are they going to become police officers? Yeah. Don't you have to fix that problem first? Mm-hmm. Now, I come out and say that. And there are people who think that's a racist statement. But I come out and say, wait a minute, what did I say that was... You know, when, when half the black kids in Minneapolis don't get a high school diploma, what happens to them? Yeah. They end up on the public dole. Mm-hmm. They end up in poverty. They end up turning to things like gangs and things because they don't have money and they don't, you know, whatever. And we recycle those same people in the next mm-hmm. generation. I mean, and that's... How do we break that? We can't break that if we aren't free to say, look, yeah. here's the problem in your community. It's that, <clears throat> you know, whether that's uh, – and it, it starts in the home, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it also, you know, it, it, until that – and, and th- these black leaders have no ideas – when it comes to this, they have no clue. You listen to Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton talk. They have nothing to say when it comes to issues like this. It's just pull out the race card. It's, oh, you white people don't know. You don't mm-hmm. care. But I mean, it's, and I'm, I sit there and I say, you know, there's nothing I'd love more than for North Minneapolis to not be a ghetto and to be a thriving place for people to live and work in a safe place, a gang-free place. Th- there's nothing I would want mm-hmm. more than the North Minneapolis is a dump. And it's because whether whatever race, okay? Mm-hmm. Because there are plenty of are white plenty. people there who yeah. are doing the same thing. Absolutely. But I are. think it's a bigger problem in the minority community than it is among whites. That's my opinion. I think there's facts that back that up, but whatever that problem needs to be solved. And I don't know what, what is going to solve that. If we can't even say that half the black kids not graduating high school in Minneapolis is a problem, and we better do something about that now, well, look how, at do the, we, how do we expect a different outcome? Look at the leadership we have in Minneapolis, though. I mean, do you really expect you, anything different? You think different? that's leadership? I mean, I mean yeah, that it's an absence of leadership. But look at, I mean, it, it doesn't who matter put them who there? they elect. Who put them there? Yeah, the people of Minneapolis. So who do we have to blame for the leadership? Then? The people of Minneapolis. So if Minneapolis wants to change... They can. But, you know, why is it dangerous to go downtown? Why, you know... Why did Block E close? You had something good there, and it closed because why? It was too dangerous. People didn't want to go because the gang problem would not be handled. You know, of it's not. If you come down hard on it, you're called a racist. But you well, know, where's and, <laughs> yeah? But they don't think that's the problem. You know, and 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 that's the thing. I mean, I'm going to put this up on on uh, my next Instagram post, and so you guys can go check that out on Instagram at c o m m solutions m n. But I, I showed Andrew this uh, before yeah. we went on the air. Uh, I was happened to be in North Minneapolis, uh, just west of 94 and just north of Broadway. And uh, there was a garbage can sitting out. It must have been garbage day. Uh, it was full of garbage, whatever. Big screen TV sitting next to it. Uh, you, you can see this in the picture. But it lists out, I, I guess in chalk, on the garbage can... What North Minneapolis's problems are, hmm. they've got it figured out. Andrew, cops, men, hmm. sexism, racism, and hate. Hmm. Never mind that. Well, since Minneapolis has organized garbage hauling, is that destroying city property? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Of course, the person won't get prosecuted for it. Well, you know that the that men are a problem. That's not hateful, I guess. Yeah. Not it, it would not be no, it would not be considered that. No, okay. But but that's the thing. I mean, our priorities are messed up, and we don't know exactly what. But again, it's where it's, you know political correctness and uh, just an unwillingness to have tough conversations honestly mm-hmm. uh, is hampering us. I mean, you know. Uh, you know it. This this whole deal of of uh, you know it's also this whole thing. You can't judge anybody. 
there's no right and wrong anymore. There's no um, well, and, and observations are called judgments too. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, they, they quoting it true judging. statistics yeah. are are racist. You know, I had a, a Twitter argument with somebody I don't know that was claiming that in Kentucky they, the, uh, you know, felons can't vote or felons who've served whatever. I don't I don't recall what the law is there, and that's being called racist. And it's like, well, if you don't, if you want to vote, don't commit a felony. I mean, that it, they're all treated equally. I mean, yeah. whether you're black, white, well, doesn't matter. But since blacks get incarcerated more, it 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 quote disenfranchises them from voting. Right, and and you know, I imagine there's an argument to be made, you know, against you know drug laws and all that, and who they unfairly target, and you know, but but, but again, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. I mean, it it the the law prosecutes people equally. You know, if and, you're a felon, you can't vote. Right, and there right? is there are some questions about defense attorneys and whether mm-hmm. that's really equal, and so on and so forth. But again, the solution to that is to not commit a crime. That's the solution. Um, yeah. It's kind of like watching Liar Liar when when Jim Carrey got a phone call. Uh, have you seen that movie before? Yeah. And and uh, it was like the person who got arrested for the fiftieth time. And he grabs the phone. And he goes, "Stop breaking the law!" <laughs> 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 but it was just it was great about yeah. you know, isn't there isn't there something in that? And look, drug laws and and I'm going to surprise some people with my answer here need to be looked at as to whether they're serving a, a, a legitimate cause or not. Yeah. I mean, because I've always said that gun laws don't seem to stop anything. We oh, make no. more laws, and we seem to have more of a problem, not less. Right. Well, drugs, we've made every law on the face of the earth. We've done everything from just say no to scare people. And that doesn't seem to be working either. If there's demand for something, Mm -hmm. the supply is going to be there regardless. So I think this is, you know, something that I think people on the right are going to struggle with. Um, I know I have uh, because I think things like marijuana are a gateway drug. But um, is it time to debate whether this is futile or not? Mm -hmm. I think it's long past time. Uh, You know, when it comes to the harder stuff, I don't know. But I think that... uh, People have to be open to the fact that, you know, I think it's something in the 30% or something or marijuana related crimes that take up court costs. Yeah. And, you know, people have paraphernalia in their car and they're being prosecuted. Is that the best, you know, use of our law enforcement? Is that the, I mean, you know, I don't know. Problem is, drugs destroy lives. Yep. It's they true. Do. Legal drugs destroy lives. I yes. Mean, I mean, that's a whole other – it's the same issue, but it's the other side of the it's coin. It's addiction to us. The, the same thing. It's an yeah. addiction, whether it's painkillers, whether mm. it's depression pills. One's what, legal because it makes you happy and the doctor can sign a note. <laughs> yeah. The other is illegal because it makes you happy and <laughs> the doctor can't sign a note. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's the same cycle to me. I mean, you can medicate yourself with – Alcohol or painkillers or cocaine, uh, they can all serve the same purpose if they're abused. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it is long past that time. And I just wonder where we're headed with that. So, I don't know. Look, point is, um, uh, why is it that people can't sit and do what you and I are doing and just have a conversation? Yeah, about I mean, it. why is that not? I mean, you and I don't agree on everything. We can we can start That's debating true. NAFTA if you want to, and you know, or <laughs> something like that. But yeah. I mean, you could pull out your old Smoot and Holly trick on me. Hey, but you know, <laughs> but, I only you know, have the whole uh, whole of the '30s to show for it. <laughs> hey, I I I somebody can, you can call me a protectionist if you want to, but you know, uh-huh. I'm pro America first, so. And I guess that's racist now to say. I guess it is. You know, I mean, to be called a nationalist is not a crime. To be called a national socialist, that's different. 
a nationalist is someone that believes in their country, a national socialist, which is who they're comparing it to, white supremacy. Right. They're socialists, which is akin to communism, which is on the left. Let me put it to you this way. If the president yes. of Mexico came out and said he was a Mexican nationalist, nobody would budge an eye at it. No. Donald Trump says it, and it's treated completely differently. Right. That's, well, the, that's the difference. Yeah. And, and, and so I, I guess as we're, we're coming around, it's like, all of this craziness is going on, and you see how we're getting worked in, up into the weeds and getting worked up here. And and so America kind of feels the same way. And and they went into this election season so divided, you know. And and you had one side that was whipped up, and and, and the Republicans maybe weren't so much. And and then the whole Kavanaugh thing happened, and then you had two sides. It was like a like the Soviet arms race to see who could turn out the vote. And it, it was two trains racing each other. Absolutely. You know, and I, I think that there was still a lot of uh, conservatives that did not come out to vote. Uh, they just, for some reason or another, didn't see the importance of it. I think there was a lot of recruitment uh, of young voters, of new voters, but I don't know if they actually came out. I don't, you know, I I've seen always said numbers. this. Yeah. If you rely on young people, you're a fool when it comes to voting. Yeah. I just, I don't think young people, I don't want to say they don't care because a lot of them do. Um, I know I did when I, mm-hmm. I, I cared a lot. And I, of course, you know, I came from a family that, 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 my parents encouraged that yeah. and so on. Even when I started disagreeing with them, they still, you know, they, they never stopped debating and never stopped learning and things like that. But ultimately, young people aren't where it's at when you're going to go, especially in a midterm. Mm-hmm. You do that, you're farting up wind. I think that uh, ultimately uh, you came down nationally I believe it was 41 Republicans that did not that chose not to run for re-election, yeah. um, which I think had somewhat of an effect. I think some states are changing a little bit. I think there were some. Uh, you have to give credit to some uh, Democratic recruitment of candidates, yep. not voters, candidates. Yeah, and I think. Uh, some of the Democrats did a good job of finding candidates to fit. Um, you know, uh, I know that uh, some like Joe Manchin type candidates were recruited. Kind of yeah. interesting to see how that all breaks down the House. The Democrats really don't have much margin for error. I mean, a, a handful of House Democrats rebel and they don't. I, I, again, we'll get into this because I got my issues with yeah. some of the stuff that happened here and how I'm very angry about it. But. Um, and I think you have the a- average historical trend. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you look at the flip of t- the Democrats winning the House of Representatives nationally, they actually won less than half the seats that the Republicans won in 2010 and in 1994. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it means nothing for 2020. Um, who got reelected right after those two elections? Yeah. You know, everybody says this election was about President Trump. Um, the Democrats should be glad it wasn't because if Trump was on the ballot, no way that would have happened. Yeah. I mean, you look where he went and campaigned for like those yeah, Senate races, well. Missouri, yeah. Indiana. He was in Florida, which I, at this hour is uh, trying to be stolen right now. Um, I'm a little surprised that the Nevada seat fell. Um, that surprised me a little bit. I'm surprised that Tester won in Montana. Yeah. Um, I'm a little surprised at that. I think Trump should have spent some more time there. Um, but uh, and then there's one more seat that got picked up. I can't think of it. But Missouri, Missouri. I, did I not mention Missouri? No. Yeah, but I mean that was won by a wide margin. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I think that the um, it's a tough election for a president because when you're not on the ballot, but your policies are, <laughs> mm. you know. And I will say this too about the House. Republicans, um, you know, what did they have to run on? I mean, I keep saying President Trump has tried to do every single thing 
whether you like it or not. Yeah. He hasn't BSed his way into doing things. Right. Um, the Republican Senate has, outside of the tax cuts yeah. and Judge Gorsuch and Judge Kavanaugh, can you name another thing the Senate did in two years? They didn't do anything about Obamacare. They didn't. They killed do anything it. about a wall. They didn't. You know. Yeah. Trump's built it through executive order. They've used their own funds to. They've yeah. diverted the funds. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> immigration yeah, not solved. Um, so when you when you make all and, and there's no excuse for it because the Republicans from 2010 on mm -hmm. repeal and replace. All of a sudden they had a chance uh. to do it. What happened? Where were their ideas all? Where was yeah. President Trump was just standing there. Give me a bill, please. Spending has still gone up. I know. And I, I was kind of hoping the president would veto that omnibus stuff. He threatened yeah. to. Well, I wish he would have, too. He, here's, well, it's a case where he needs the line item. Yeah. It's, you know, when, yeah. when you get a bill that's 65% good, 35% bad, wouldn't you like to be able to stamp <laughs> out the 30? You know, like the Minnesota but, governor has yeah. that ability. And it'd be very nice if the president did, too. And... You know, I, I think the Senate will be more palatable, especially if um, with judges and things. I mean, Marsha Blackburn's more conservative than Bob Corker. Yeah. Obviously, we got Rick Scott, I think, mm -hmm. in Florida. Um, you know, certainly with McCaskill out of there and the vote North Dakota. North Dakota, that was yep. the other one I forgot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Indiana going down. Like I said, Joe Manchin's a more reliable Republican vote than half the senators are. So, you know, I don't know why he doesn't switch parties. It just doesn't make sense to me. But um, it's okay. I just worry that now that he's reelected, he may not, you know, right. he may go more to the left. He's got four years to goof off. He's got six years to goof well, off. Well, he's got to whip his well, act into true. shape for two. As long as he stays in it with the <laughs> coal industry, it's going to be tough. But, um, yeah. but the point being that, you know, they, they have the votes now, I think, to – really get something, but I, I don't think the Democrats want to work with him. And I think that's ultimately what's with Trump, I mean. Right. And I think that's ultimately what's... Uh, but, of course, that could spell their doom, too. Yeah. If the president plays his cards right. Absolutely. So, but you again, I think... to overplay their hand. Again, I think right. Trump is so much smarter than people give him credit for. He's going to try to make a deal. Mm -hmm. He's a deal maker. He's going he's to attempt. But my guess is... He ultimately outmaneuvers them. That's what I think is going to – because you know I think Trump's going to win in mm. 2020. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just I, – I, it was funny. There was a Twitter poll put out about the Democrats' leading contender in 2020. Yeah. The winner was none of the above. <laughs> no, I mean, I still to this day, I mean, who's their candidate? I yeah. Mean, it's pretty Well, important. I mean, there's – because that race in Texas was so close, there's a lot of – Thoughts about Beto maybe being the the guy, but yeah, you spend seventy million dollars to unseat Ted Cruz. Wouldn't that money have been better spent feeding the poor, or uh, yeah. you know, getting people through college, or you know, something like that? I'll use the left's argument against them, right? But I mean, they really don't have a candidate under eighty. I mean, no, I mean, uh, Biden. Biden, I believe, is seventy-seven. Yeah. Right. Bernie Sanders about yeah. eighty. Yep. Yeah. Elizabeth Warren, I think, is 71-ish. Yeah. I think she's a joke. Yeah. But anyhow, I mean, I don't... And then these these other people that they're floating, I mean, these, uh, you know... They don't, they, they don't have that Obama, that Kennedy, that Clinton kind of person. I'm, right. I'm not putting Clinton and Obama with Kennedy in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, because I think he was the last half-decent Democratic president. But... Um, I don't know who's that figure that they have. I mean, you have to draw a contrast, I think, to President Trump. And I think the Democrats instead want somebody who's going to outslime him. Yeah. And I think that, you know. Yeah, I mean, Cory Booker. Really? <laughs> who's he? Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. just happens to live in one of five states that would elect him. Right. <laughs> I just, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. here's the thing. Yeah. If if you're the Democrats are smart, mm -hmm. that's a big if. My next Obama, my next Kennedy, that Democrat in their forties, I'm holding them till 2024. Yeah, that's what I'm doing because American people like to switch. Yeah. Okay. And you know this in American history? Oh, we're giving facts away like crazy. I know we're babbling here, but do you know that four consecutive United States presidents have never been elected to two terms? Mm-hmm. 
Three has only happened once. Yeah. Jefferson, Madison, Monroe. Right. And then John Quincy Adams was defeated by Andrew Jackson. Yes. So it has, it has never happened that. But incumbent presidents are hard to beat. They are. They're just tough. Even if they're not likable. Well, if you if you look at the 20th century. Yeah. Presidents that won a term. Yeah. And then ran for re-election. So I'm I'm not counting Gerald Ford or somebody like that. Carter. Carter, yeah. George Bush Sr. George Bush Sr. Herbert yeah. Hoover. Yeah. And then one of the most underrated presidents, in my opinion, and that's William Howard Taft. Yes. Absolutely. Um, I think he was a very good president. Uh, and the Lord knows if he'd have been re-elected, what <laughs> may not have happened in 1913. That's anyhow, true. That's anyhow, true. I'm still blaming Teddy Roosevelt for it. Uh. Anyhow... Those are the only four in an entire century to win a term and then lose. Yeah. So you want a, you want a tough task that's unseating an incumbent president. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I think it's I, – I think Trump enters it as the favorite regardless. Right. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of stuff was swirling around before, you know, before Clinton's reelection. Uh, that didn't hamper him. You know, Obama was loved by many, hated by many. He still won. Well, I mean, none of them ran under perfect circumstances. George W. Bush. A lot of conservatives hated George W. Bush, and they still reelected him. Yeah. Well, and I mean, but if you think about it, I mean, President Obama, you know, the economy was not great. Yeah. Um, Really... Outside of the health care thing, there was really nothing else he accomplished. Right. And he still won. It was all about feeling, obviously. Yeah. President Bush, I mean, the economy was okay, but we were in Iraq and stuff, and he won anyway. Mm-hmm. Bill Clinton was a president mired by scandal every yeah. waking minute, and he was reelected. So, I mean, none of these three presidents were great presidents. Right. And they all... <laughs> You know, Reagan's probably the last transformative one yes. to have won a second term. So it's kind of like, yeah. how in the world? It's an uphill battle. And I still think the Electoral College favors the Republicans. Mm-hmm. Um, there's way more red states than blue states. Well, and I would not be surprised to see a push to get rid of it in the next, you know, it's, four well, years. You know, it's... I wouldn't be shocked. I think we're headed that direction, unfortunately. Yeah. But let's talk about what happened here in Minnesota. Yeah. So I got some thoughts. You know, I live in CD3. Yeah. Well, what? We lost 11 House seats off the Republican side. Yeah, I don't know how many. I, I think know. it was 11. What was the so, majority uh, by? I don't even know. Uh, I don't they, they still have their one seat uh, Senate uh yeah. fish box seat. Right. That that stayed in Republican That's, hands. Yeah, and so, so we're not totally in, in the blue here. There's some balance, some... Some ability to shut things down as long as they don't fold like a cheap suit. I don't know. I think there's enough fence strat. There's enough uh, Lisa Mokulski's in the Senate that I, I don't think there's a working majority. Yeah. I don't think there ever was. I think you have maybe – it's 34 to 33. It's a one-seat majority, and I think maybe only about 26 or so are solid conservatives. I think you have wow. – Depending on how you'd grade it, and everybody does these scorecards and that crap, uh, where they cherry pick ten votes or whatever. Yeah, I I see anywhere from five to eight waffle. Having said that, I'm not sure the Democrats are going to always be in lockstep, but I think they will be because of the Democratic House and a Democratic governor. I I think that there's so much incentive and there's going to be so much pressure not to break rakes on anything that I don't don't think a vote can be spared. Now, um, first-time winners can be unpredictable and Mm -hmm. jittery about another term and uh, surprised they won. It can happen. But if you really want a, a microcosm, of what happened in Minnesota, two races really stand out. And being in CD3, I could sit here and make fun of this all day long. As you know, Eric Paulson was yeah. defeated. Mm-hmm. And I am going to give a lot of credit for that to two people. One, Eric Paulson. Yeah. And the other, Dean Phillips. Yeah. And Eric Paulson did not run well, and he was not helped 
by the people around him or the outside groups around him that he doesn't control. Mm-hmm. You know, it's illegal for a candidate to collude with the House Republican Committee either at a state or a federal level. Yeah. So I can't hold him responsible for that, but I do hold the Republican Party responsible. I will credit Dean Phillips up and down. I think he ran a great campaign. I did not vote for him. Will not. But uh, Dean Phillips did a great job advertising. He did a great job um, not being hate-filled. Mm-hmm. He did a great... Now, the Democratic National Committee was different. But right. Phillips himself, um, he did a great job making it about Paulson, not Donald Trump, mm-hmm. which was a big mistake Terry Bonoff made. Terry Bonoff could have won that election two years ago, and she got smoked. And, and it, it could have been hers. Hillary Clinton won the third, uh, but Paulson was reelected easily. But I think Bonoff was the one who ultimately made the mistakes. Eric Paulson was invisible as a candidate. Yeah. You are in an. Uh, the Republican moderates are the ones who got their clocks cleaned. Mm-hmm. And I believe that you either have to embrace what's going on. Or run from it. What you can't do is this half in, half out stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, some people like Jason Lewis got beat anyway. But Lewis went down kicking and screaming. Some of that was the advertising against him. Some of that advertising was genius. Yeah, I agree. We got outwitted. There's no doubt about it. I mean, that ad that had, like, undercover camera footage of him walking into the D.C. Uh, senators club or whatever the 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 rich people's club. I mean, I, I, when I saw that ad, I'm like, he's done. Yeah, and, and why didn't we film Angie Craig doing the same thing? Yeah. What is she on food stamps? <laughs> Dean Phillips. What yeah. is? Who's the rich guy in that race? Yeah, Phillips. Um, I think though that uh, you have to give him credit. I couldn't watch a YouTube video without seeing a positive Dean Phillips ad. Hmm. On there. Um, and the Republican Party and the side groups did Eric Paulson no favors. Yeah. Um, the last thing that was put out by the Republican, I, I don't know who this was. There's the HRCC mm-hmm. and there's the NRCC, and they're two different groups. Right. It was all about how Eric Paulson supports common sense gun laws. <laughs> now, Jay, stop and think for a second. Yeah. The. Nutty gun law people are already voting on one side. Yes. They're not going to change because of that issue. Oh, no. Oh, no. And Paulson is not a nut when it comes to gun control. Yeah. Paulson's base is going to hate that. Yep. So you tell me, who is that ad aimed at? I have no idea. It's terrible. If I was in the third... Good chance I would have voted Constitution Party or Libertarian Party. <laughs> I don't know if there was a candidate, but you could have wrote in somebody. But yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. what was the thinking there? I don't know. Now, if Paulson himself had done that to highlight the fact that, and I'm just spitballing here, highlight the fact that he's more moderate than. Blah, blah, blah. If he thinks that's what he has to do, that's one thing. If I am MNGOP or the National Republicans, yeah. how in the hell are you putting that out thinking that that is going to turn? I mean, your job is to get the Republicans out. That's your job. Mm-hmm. Okay. What? Who put that together? Somebody who doesn't understand the voter base at all. And I honestly think the the commercials they put out against Dean Phillips were terrible. They yeah. made him they made him look like a victim. They yeah. were they were given Fs by media put out a, a KSTP, yeah. which is Tom Hauser and those guys are about as fair as it's going to get yeah. as far as mainstream media here. I like Tom. It's about as fair. Yeah. He's like the Tim Russert of Minnesota, if, if I can make a comparison to yeah. the fairest guy you might find in Washington. Right. Okay, that doesn't work for Fox. No, I, I didn't mind the, the ad about uh, 
the whole health care thing, not at, offering health care. Uh, that one, I think, was was pretty true from what I understand. The one about... I know what you're talking about, yeah, though. He doesn't care about women. He, he let uh, sexual misconduct go in his company. What? Like, he has any control over some Yahoo that he hired. No kidding. I mean, why are you putting it, out that ad? There were other uh, things in that ad, too, that I can't remember, but I know exactly. But the health care was legitimate. Yeah. You can't call health care a right and then not provide it. Right. But again, that that came early. Where was that in the closing days? Right. Instead, Where was it's that a, later? Where was, Phillips doesn't support women. It's like, but here, here's what I was yeah. waiting for, too. This is, what, this is what I was waiting for. A vote for Dean Phillips. Yeah. And Dean Phillips is not a nut, I don't think. He's left. We'll see. Okay? Yeah, yeah, we'll see. A vote for Dean Phillips is to put Jerry Nadler in charge of the House Judiciary Committee, yeah. who's threatened to impeach the president and Judge Kavanaugh. It is a uh, it is a vote to put Nancy Pelosi in charge of the House. It's a vote to put Maxine Waters in charge of the Government that Operations scare Committee. Anybody. Where yeah. was a commercial with Maxine Waters threatening violence, saying a vote for this guy means these people are in the majority? Mm-hmm. And that's who's going to take control. Yep. There should have been a big Mount Rushmore with Pelosi, Nadler, and Maxine Waters with their arms and around Schiff. Dean Phillips. Yep. And Adam Schiff, too, yeah. who's now going to be in charge of investigating everything that's been investigated 500 times. Right. And, of course, it's a Washington investigation where it's an investigation in search of a crime. We don't know anything's happened. We're not going to stop till we find something. Right. So um, where was that? Yeah. It, the, the ads were terrible. And I come they're, this. They're, the, the Democrats put out good ads. The Republicans put out crap. <laughs> it was crap. It was, really was crap. And, unfortunately, and I'll, I'll bring it down to the state level. Yeah. Dario Anselmo. <laughs> Our favorite who wanted to make tobacco 21 plus. Dario Anselmo yes. tried to kiss butt to every liberal group he could think of, from gun control to Tobacco 21 to blah, blah, blah. You know, you got to stand for something. And he got his clock clean worse than any Republican incumbent across the state. Mm -hmm. And let that be a lesson. Let it be a lesson. Yeah. That that is not going to work. You got to have some principles. You just do. And if you don't, you're going to lose. But I'm telling you, I think there were a lot of Republicans there who didn't vote for him. Yeah. I mean, I, I it's the only conclusion I can draw. Right. Uh, I don't know if they wrote in somebody. I don't know what happened. But I think he. some people might have left it blank. Um, I don't know if I would have pulled the trigger for him. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't, I don't think I would have. Yeah, I... I wouldn't have voted Democrat. I would have voted something else. I'd right. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> but, I told you that I voted for Daffy Duck and Harry Arm. Yeah. When it came to Plymouth City Council, and I believe it was uh, uh, county attorney. Yeah. I, I think because we had two DFLers running against each right. other. Harry Arm. H-A-R-R-Y. So it's Harry, a real guy. Yeah. Arm. Yeah. Okay. That's what I voted for. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the only thing I could think of is to have such a turnaround there. Um, and I've shared this with you that, you know, I have I won't vote Democratic, but I will vote independent or libertarian if I think the Republican isn't up for it. And yeah, I, I would consider myself an independent because, yeah, I will vote Constitution Party. I will vote Libertarian. I will vote Independence Party. I, if I I will go with my conscience. You know, just because I w am more than likely never going to vote for a Democrat, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that I'm not an independent. I mean, the, the Republican does not have my vote by any means. Not They've got to prove themselves. Yeah, not an automatic. No. So it was uh, statewide. I don't even know if I, I – I tell you what. If there was one Republican that I thought ran a good campaign, mm -hmm. it was Doug Wardlow. Yes. Um he did great advertising. He was the only Republican that I saw doing YouTube and, and stuff like that. Uh, I think, unfortunately, there's enough unprincipled people on the other side yeah. that care about power more. 
Yeah. And ultimately, um, uh, I don't. Uh, I don't want to get into what I think of our attorney general elect. Let's just leave. It but I, I mean, this is a thing. I mean, and, and we're talking about this now. And here we are, you know, a couple of conservative guys, and we're willing to go off the reservation, if you will, not vote Republican if if the Republican stinks. Um, go and look at other parties. But the Democrats seem to be able to line themselves up, even if they don't agree. They will. They will. If they're a blue dog Democrat. They won't always, but a lot of times they they don't mind going behind somebody that's a, a democratic socialist or somebody that has broken so many laws that it's obvious they don't care about about our legal system or or create. Why should they be creating the laws if if they have no regard for them, like Ilhan Omar, right. like Keith Ellison, that have a laundry list of things that, that well, and and where are the so called Leaders of the party. I mean, um, yeah. you know, uh, our great Senator Klobuchar, who hid out, was campaigning in Iowa. Yeah. Um, didn't want to answer questions about anything like she that. She didn't need to. Well, but <laughs> yeah. to me, she has a duty to do oh, it, absolutely. whether she doesn't want to or not. But she knows this state doesn't care. No <clears throat> elector. They know her side doesn't care. Yeah. That's what she knows. Yeah. So um, just, I mean, for the... Party in Minnesota, just an embarrassment. I mean, I I don't know what happens. I think a shakeup is needed of some kind. I'd like to know where all this money we raised was spent at the MNGOP. I mean, I'm not blaming anybody down there. Nobody there should be a sacrificial lamb. Ultimately, they weren't candidates. Um, the top of the ticket was pretty weak, I thought. But um, we bragged and bragged about all this fundraising, and I'd like to know what where it went. Yeah, because let me say this. I don't know how many pieces of literature I got from that were funded by unions, funded by Planned Parenthood, flun- and, and and they were the size of this computer screen here. Yeah. I mean, they were big. They, I, what is this? Uh, 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 There's like a 13-inch screen here. So they were like a 13-inch piece of, of uh, lit, full color, glossy. Paid for by your family's union or by hmm. Planned Parenthood for all the Democrat candidates. I probably received twenty to twenty-five hmm. of these pieces of lit. Guess how many I received from the Republicans? Hmm. Zero. <laughs> Zero pieces. The, the of only literature. time I got something was asking for money. And on top of that, there was a a, a door hanger piece that went out the weekend before the election. That the Democrats put out that looked all official about, you know, make sure you vote, all this. And then, of course, they list their candidates on there and, and they have a link to their, you know, the DFL website. Uh, but I thought it was a really smart piece. Where were the Republicans with any of, any of it? I saw nothing. Yeah. I, they, they were outmaneuvered. They were, I think, caught back on their heels. I don't know, but don't look at me. I don't know where the hell they were. <laughs> but I think that, that there is a silver lining in all of this, Andrew. Yeah. You know, I I know Republicans lost a ton of seats. Uh, we held the U.S. Senate. Okay, we held the Minnesota Senate. Great. Let's let's let champagne rain from the heavens or whatever. <laughs> but there is a silver lining in all this. You know, and, and, and when we look at what we care about, when we look at local races, the news was a lot better, you know? Well, we, it was, um, we should start in our hometown. Yeah. You know, I just want to publicly say to some people that, uh, we had Nadine Heinrich on the show. Yep. Um, and she won. Congratulations. Andy. Yeah, Ramsey. It was cool to see her win. Yeah. Uh, our, our friend Paul Kinnear, he was on uh, one of our episodes. Uh, we were at the Republican Convention yep. in Duluth. Episode 66. Uh, you, yeah, of course you know it. Uh, well, I got it up. I was looking for it beforehand. Yeah. So, um, Leading vote getter. Yeah, leading vote getter. Won by Big quite Lake. a wide margin. There. Did a great job, you know. Uh, congratulations, Paul. You know, and there are other people. That- we had Olga Parsons on the show. Yep. One of our friends uh, was re-elected in the city of Crystal and uh, our yep. hometown and my hometown anyway, your current town. 
and it was a, a thrill to see her reelected. Yep. You know, we had some friends in St. Cloud that uh, that we saw get elected for the first time. And, and, and so, you know, th- uh, things at that level, I think, look really good and really promising. Um, I would say that there are, you know, just watching all the, the races that we knew about and, and that, it you know, in, in some involvement in whether that's through training and education or working one-on-one with people like we do mm-hmm. or all of that kind of stuff. I mean, it, I'll say that, that we're easily in the double digits. You know, um, just just seeing those returns made me feel good to know that the effort and work that we're putting forward is is paying off. Well, it's paying off. It's never good enough, though, Jay. And it's uh, no. something um, we want to stay on crystal for a second. Uh, Let's do that. Um, some interesting things developed in that uh, election. Uh, congratulations to Brandon Banks from Ward Two. Um, it, Brendan, I'll just Brendan. That. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that that's okay. You're used to seeing Renee misspell it on all of her <laughs> crap. <laughs> so, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. but uh, congratulations to him on uh, uh, winning in Ward Two, replacing uh, Jeff Kolb, a friend of ours. Who retired. He wasn't retired. voted out. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> retired. I like calling it that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, definitely a shout out to our friend David Safran, mm-hmm. who uh, did not win. But um, I was, uh, it was such a great interview we had with David. I feel, yeah. you know, tough that uh, he th- that he didn't win. So, but you know, he did work very hard, and um, I'm just uh, I'm I'm saddened that uh, he didn't get across the finish line. Yep, but uh, you know, all three of those races. I mean it. To take a look at what happened in the city of Crystal, uh, I mean, here we are, you know, it, it, we're in a blue area once again, you know, uh, purplish to blue, and three candidates that came out as strong DFL, we are Democrats, and in two of those races, nonpartisans won, people who did not declare a party, people who wanted to serve all of the citizens of crystal and not just the ones that vote blue on the ticket. Right. I mean, we mentioned that how it was again, um, one side kept trying to make it all about three letters. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say there's a little election controversy going (laughs) on with our former mayor. Yeah. Who just, I've run out of adjectives to, you know, I mean, um, and I'm Joseph Goebbels in her mind. She thinks you're quite smitten with her, actually. Uh, (laughs) It's funny how she said that right after I said that about her. So I think that just goes to show how much she listens to the show. Right. Now, of course, more people hear me than read her. So, you know, um, but I'm, uh, I, I'm, (laughs) I don't even know how to lead into this because I'm puzzled as to what, uh, the former mayor put out, uh, this would be four or five days ago now, but when people hear this, uh, it will be like a week and change, um, about, a mysterious lit piece that supposedly arrived at her house. Hmm. Um, this is what she claims on her book face. Some person or organization who appears to support, she calls him Brandon. Yes. Uh, Brandon Banks campaign, which is not proper grammar. Is dropping literature disparaging me. Once again, the former mayor makes the claim that she's a private citizen, which is a lie. You are a public figure. Um, and she makes herself a public figure. Well, continually. You're still a public figure. Yeah. So are you. So am I. Right. It's just Absolutely. in the eyes of the law, we are. Um, she claims to have died of laughter when she saw it. Well, she doesn't sound like she's too funny about it. Um, 
she then goes on and on. There's people who comment, uh, blah, 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 asking her they want to see it. Now, yeah. Renee lives in Ward 2, okay, which is Brendan Banks is where he won. Yes. I called up, talked to friends in Ward 2. Friends talked to me in Ward 2. Nobody seems to have gotten this mysterious lit piece. Hmm. Well, it's funny because I, I know Brendan commented on this thread to say, yeah. I would love to, I, I don't know of any piece. I didn't put anything out. I would love to, to uh, what's the word he used? I don't have it in front of me, but but basically to um, castigate it, to say. Denounce you know, to, it. To den- that's what he said, to denounce it. All, you know, he's one that called for it to be put up so that he could see it. Yeah, well, and Renee refuses to do that. She says, no, you have to come to my house to see it. Yes. Um, um, this is my favorite part. I stand by dis- my decision not to post it. No one took credit. I cannot accuse the boogeyman. Well, since when? Remember, Renee, everybody's corrupt but her. Right. She got into the school board and everybody was corrupt but her. The fire board, everybody was corrupt and she was the lone ranger who knew the truth. Okay, so since when are you? Since when do you take the moral high road? Yeah. Oh, never. You to know. publish the piece increases the size of the audience. Yeah, if you tell all your friends, that's what six people. Yeah, it, it sure increases the size of the audience. Right. Um, I like this too. I feel like a cross was burned on my front yard. <laughs> What's the implication of that? Who burns a cross? Right. Ku Klux Klan. Ku Klux Klan at, in the yards of minorities, not not the other way around. Um, I really dislike the uh, trashing of Mr. Banks and where he lives and um, uh, you know that that's just so out of line. I mean, I thought the Democrats were the were the party of the poor and that they all have a voice and they all can serve and we you know in, and to disparage that is just sick um, uh, Mr. Banks was very uh, uh, good in his response yeah I'm glad he's not uh, you know he was classy and uh, you know, um, he just refused. I just put it to you this way: he, you know, he asked for it to be shared, to be sent to him. Uh, Renee just doesn't want to do it. Can I raise a specter, okay. Jay? Yeah. Since Miss Bowman refuses to publish this, and so nobody else got it or nobody knows about it, yeah, is it possible this story is both? It's very possible. I mean, I wouldn't believe. Renee Bowman, I, her word is about as good as a as a milk bucket under a bull. I wouldn't believe her if she swore she was telling a lie. So, <laughs> isn't it possible that and we know how much she loves to play the victim? Oh yeah, because you know she can spew hate and is the most hate filled person I've ever met in politics. That's saying something. Yeah. And but. You know, she can dish this out. She can't take it. All of a sudden, she's a private citizen. Nobody can touch her. Nobody can do anything. Is it possible that she either made this herself, is lying about it, or this is complete garbage? Yeah. Is this pop? I mean, who made up? I mean, I can't believe you and I haven't been accused of this. Well. (laughs) I mean, I understand why I'd be, you and I would be suspects here. Yes. But I can, and I want to state for the record, I don't have any idea what this is about. I have no clue what is on it or anything like that. It I, did not come from me. It, I did had nothing to do with it. And if it did have it something, I'd put my face on it that I did it. Absolutely. I've, I, whatever I have to say about Renee, I have said. Mm-hmm. So, um, I and I've been asked about it by people who think I'm behind it, or you're behind it, or whatever. And I can say, but I, is this possible she's making this up? I don't think it would be the first time. I mean, maybe first time for a lit piece like this. I mean, this is like a whole new level of, I don't know what, but. 
you know, and she does claim to be the victim, and she talks about about positivity, and she talks about you know oh, being no against labels. hate, but yet you look at her Facebook page, and it's full of things like "oh yes" to things that say "hatred," spreading hate, or wrapped in the flag and thumping a Bible, or uh, there was something you know continually calling our president Agent Orange, or. Uh, the fact that people blur female nipples to be socially acceptable and not Ted Cruz's face in pictures is a double standard. Yeah, loving, that kind. That's that that's her. There Good is, tea. and you know, I'll tell you what, it, it only gets worse from there. I, I remember one I'm gonna see if I can find it here. Okay. Keep talking, Jay, because Okay, I, okay. Nothing like put me on the spot. Yeah. Put the introvert on the spot. That's good. It's a good plan. But it, it we, our struggles with the former I hate to say leadership elected representation of of this city you know still struggle on today the the nice thing is they're not in power uh, they keep trying to find people to get elected um, yeah. you know I, I don't know what their goal is you know obviously mm. it drives them nuts that there are fair and uh, reasonable people that are running the city that have made it more transparent, that have tried new ideas that people in the city like, that they've been able to to work in a manner that is, uh, oh my word, yeah, oh, maybe we, I shouldn't read that on air. I'm going to read it. <laughs> Here's, Why not? With it, this one's going to come with. A I've word sworn a it, bunch so. of times, so I, what's the big deal? <laughs> um. I don't even is Viagra government funded? Uh, I don't know. I Maybe the research. I don't I don't know. Uh, well, all research I think is government funded. Yeah, probably. Viagra this is from Miss Bowman's page uh in September of 2017. Viagra is government funded. If pregnancy is God wills, God's will, so is limp de- That was what she put out there. Hmm. So, I mean, there's plenty of just hate-filled garbage coming from her. And I just a memo to anybody wanting to run in Crystal, um, stay as far away from her as humanly possible, and that's probably a good idea. Don't take advice from her. I think that's about as you got to be as dumb as humanly possible to do that. But, again, congratulations to Brendan and Olga. Um, and I will say congratulations to Therese Kaiser, too. I mean, she clearly worked hard. Yep. And uh, she had run before, so, um, you know, my my ear isn't as great to Crystal as it used to be, not living there anymore, so, and I know you're not down in Ward 1, so I don't know, I don't know what happened down there, I'm just going to um, say congratulations and move on to two more years of, of things to do there. Right. But, I mean, like I was saying, um uh at the local level, I mean that—that's where our fight is at. I mean that's—that's that's where we have, I think, the greatest ability to affect change at a statewide level. Well, and I think if you want to talk more about, you mentioned, you know, that Republicans don't always have your vote and so on and so forth, and I would understand that, and I—I I concur. Although maybe you and I have a little bit different standard. <clears throat> um, if. When I think about picking up the pieces of last Tuesday, mm-hmm. where I don't want to say the party because I really don't look to them to be the leaders of this, but where do the local leaders go in searching for this? Now, pretend, okay. Jay, pretend you are in one of these races where they got flipped. Okay. Guess what? In two years, there's another race. Yep. Where are your candidates going to come from? Well, uh, being a thinking man, I'd have to. I'd have to look at a level below me. So, if I'm in the state house, I'd be looking to the uh, county commission or county boards. I'd be looking to the uh, school boards, the city councils. If I was in a federal race, I'd be looking to the people who are in the state legislature. Well, what what if you don't have those positions filled up? Well, then you're in trouble. (laughs) 
Exactly. Uh, so this is this is the whole point yeah. that we've been saying all along uh, about building a farm or whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you haven't done that, and all of a sudden somebody mm-hmm. gets beat or retires or whatever, if you don't have that Whitman sampler, that buffet line of candidates to pick from, and you're running a newbie, mm-hmm. you're running somebody you don't really know how they're going to vote. I mean, they say what they're going to do, but they don't have a track record of doing it. Yeah. What does that leave you with right now? It leaves you scrambling at the last minute and finding somebody who is willing to do it, but may not be a good candidate. And it heightens the importance of what we've said a million times. You got to fill up the advisory commissions. You got to do it. It's not, I fear that Republicans are going to be all about Trump 2020. They're going to, which of course the president doesn't need Minnesota to win. No, um, he's proven that. Uh, Ronald Reagan didn't need Minnesota. <laughs> Would have loved to have it. Had a clean sweep. But I mean, I fear that uh, it's going to be off when it comes to doing that. I just fear that the opposite mm-hmm. will be focused on well and and this is the crazy part about it Mm -hmm. how much work have you ever put in on a presidential campaign in a get out the vote effort yeah pretty much nothing and you and i i i'm in the same boat yeah and you and i have done more political work than 99 percent of the people that live in minnesota probably yeah but yet they make the race all about the president the sexy jabs. I mean, that's just that's unfortunately where the focus is. Yeah. Meanwhile, while the city and county are sucking dollars out of your bank account. Yeah, there's no tax deductions on your property taxes, are there? No. <laughs> <laughs> but yet you allow it to happen, and and you turn a blind eye to it. What has it gotten you? You know, nothing. I mean, you're poorer for it, and. And I don't understand. It's like you're so concerned about about fixing NAFTA for some reason or another or Space Force that – I'll give you a bunch of reasons to fix NAFTA. Well <laughs> – No, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, something that doesn't really affect you personally on a daily basis to allow your property taxes to grow, to allow franchise fees to be introduced, to allow Green Step to come in and start making changes that are going to raise your taxes, to allow uh, debt to be passed in your city when it doesn't need to be so that you're paying on something for the next 20 years. Yeah. You name everything, complete streets, tobacco 21, uh, gun control measures, uh, Gear, yeah. How many people even know what that is? I mean, we did a podcast on yeah, it. I'm probably the only people, probably the only people who've ever done a podcast on it. <laughs> That's probably true. So yeah, I mean, it just highlights uh, how we're going to build this thing. Uh, if you think it's going to be built from the top, you don't build a house starting with the roof. No. So you know, you don't climb a mountain and start at the top. And the, the Republican Party has to go back to ground to square zero here and yeah. say the hell with the national stuff. Um, I mean, it's important to vote. It's important to know the candidates. But and, that's about all you and, can do. And it's important. I mean, I don't want to diminish congressional races. Um, think about this, too. Eric Paulson gets beat. Everybody gets annihilated in CD3. Well, who's going who's gonna to run against Dean Phillips? Again, yeah. where's that Whitman sampler of people? Where's that county commissioner out there who maybe could make that jump? Yeah. Where's that popular mayor? Where's where is it? Right. You know, same thing in CD two. Now I know there's a lot of people. Uh, Steve Dreskowski. Uh, how do you pronounce his Dreskowski. last name? Dreskowski. Dreskowski. Uh, that's who I'd like to run against Angie Craig next time. Yeah. I don't think he'd do it, but I think he's the. <laughs> he, I'm going to nominate you, Steve. Uh, just to let you know, uh, <laughs> down in uh, Red Wing, I think he's down in that area, yeah. uh, on the corner of CD2. Um, we, I do have to say, before we wrap up here, a quick congratulations to Pete Stauber oh, yeah. and Jim Hagedorn in 1 and 8. Hagedorn was declared the winner this morning. Yes. So uh, he and Pete Stauber, so the two 
pushed here in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I would congratulate to, to David Hughes again for racking up 48% against Colin yeah. Peterson. Uh, I know that's a race that is going to fall at some yeah, point. Well, maybe next time. Possibly, but I think David put in, I think that was the highest percent that he has ever had as an opposition yeah. to Colin Peterson. And so, um, so I mean, a hard fought. He had about one one hundredth of the money. I don't know why he wasn't supported out in seven by um, the HRCC or the NRCC. I, I have because that was a race where uh, ten grand could have flipped that, and I, yeah. I don't understand it. Um, I don't know how much Hagenorn was supported either. I I know Pete Stauber was, yes, but I think he was the favorite and pretty much ahead the whole time. Mm-hmm. But you know, again, so. Uh, and and um, I worked for Tom Emmer a long time ago, and his race was never really in doubt. But congrats to him on another term too. So, but you know the the two outside seats, uh, which were dying to fall, <laughs> <laughs> fell. Yeah. So just a congratulations to them. Of course, the two inside seats that shouldn't have did. Yeah. That, yeah. So so it's I don't know. So it was a wash. Yes, but. You know, uh, there is something we can do about it, and that's that silver lining that we talk about. So what's the plan? Well, you're going to have to have us come out and speak to one of your groups, and uh, we've got some things to say over this next two-year period, and we've got a plan already in mind. I mean, I might as well just say, I mean, there were, like I said, double-digit races that we were involved in where – Somebody got elected that we were working with on some level. And we seem to understand this stuff. And I'm not bragging on us by any means. But what I'm saying is there's something, I am. There's something to this. <laughs> and we've got a plan. And we want to be able to share that plan with as many of you as possible. So if you have a group and you want to change your community, you want to stop paying higher property taxes you want to get rid of franchise fees you want to keep your roads in your community um, reflecting the character uh, that they currently do rather than having four lanes turn into two with a center lane and two bike lanes and three roundabouts yeah hey you know where we're at we're at C-O-M-M Solutions M-N at gmail.com. That's C-O-M-M Solutions M-N at gmail.com, and we'll come speak to your group. We'll tell you all about the plan and how to get people in position to be able to win in 2020. But it starts today. It doesn't start in June of 2020. It starts today. <laughs> oh, it doesn't? Oh. Well, and that's half the reason we keep losing these things. It's because we wait till the last moment. Yeah. Oh, and, and no, no offense, too, but how many people reached out to us in September and October? And where were they in May and June? Uh-huh. Where were they in March? Where were they at caucus? Where were they uh, at convention time? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, agreed. Yeah. So, hey, we want to work with you. We want to be able to turn this state back into – nonpartisan common sense that just reflects everybody you know what we all really believe because the stuff that's happening at the state level and and at the federal level is just nuts anyway <laughs> so hey get a hold of us share our stuff that we put out there and let's spread the word together if we work together we can turn this state around and that's a promise because we've done our part and we love you minnesota now it's your turn to